All of you had been asking for the Meta own accessory reviews and we thought they were coming forever. They never showed up. And so finally I went to Best Buy and I bought the grips myself. There'll be a link to that video at the end of this video. And then of course a package showed up from Meta like days later after that. Let's find out what's in here. Small box, small sharp unboxing knife. I feel like I'm actually getting much better at cutting things with this thing. We have a thick and oddly ripped cushion. We have the new Razer Hammerhead Hyper Speed Bluetooth headphones with the dongle. These are similar to what you've seen before from the likes of Anchor. Is there anything else before I get into all this? We got a whole lot of paperwork. We'll look at that later. Well, good thing I bought the grips because the grips aren't in there. So we've shown you multiple sets of headphones like these before, but now these are from Razer. They are partnered with Meta. These should be the best possible version of these in theory. Oh, I just said I was better at this than I slip. It's even got that made for Meta symbol on there that so many companies are vying for. And once again, on the inside, the plastic wrap says made for Meta. Case opens and closes decently. Something you could pretty easily do with one hand. Stays decently shut, feels secure and solid. Boy, they are beastly though. They look strangely huge. Like this part right up here just looks massive. Nice little razor backlight. You know, it's gotta be RGB, it's razor. For how giant they are, they did put the giant stuff in the right places. Cause once it goes in your ear, you don't feel like it's giant. <laughs> of course, Razer. We have got one braided fancy USB-A to USB-C cable to charge these things up with. Feels very Razer, looks very Razer. It's got their green inside. It's got their logos on it. They probably spent more on that cable, honestly, than they needed to. We got different earbud tips. An interesting note here, I can't say I've ever seen a set of earbuds with that shape. Typically they're round and I mean, I don't spend much time looking into ears, but I feel like this shape actually makes more sense from a biological standpoint of the shape of most people's ears. They're not usually a tiny round hole like most earbuds. And with that, they do go in very comfortably. They isolate sound. I'm resisting the urge to scream at you right now because it really is quieting it down. You pair that with the fact that they actually have active noise cancellation technology in there, dual environmental noise canceling microphones. So by all accounts, I would guess that these are something that on paper should be comparable to, you know, some AirPod Pro, something like that. The little dongle made of course for the Quest, unfortunately right out the gate, I'm feeling a little sad. They did not make a USB pass through on it though. So most of these have some sort of USB-C pass-through port. So if you're like me and you're using a battery, you could plug this in and then plug the battery in somewhere. Not gonna be an option with this one. Boy, by the looks of it, you would think it goes backwards, but you put it that way and all the words are all showing there and stuff. I'm guessing if there is a proper way, this is the proper way, but I wish it wasn't because that does not look right. But we'll test it both ways. We'll play with it both ways. Gosh, they do feel really good. What else do you have to tell me? Boy, making a book out of black construction paper and then making the writing silver is not the easiest way for people to read it. Of course, it shows that it's got a, oh, earlier I said that the plastic on it had the made for meta. No, that symbol is permanently on there. There's no getting that off. I will be honest, I feel like that cheapens it a little bit. Like the razor up here looks good. Eh, it's fine. It's just, it kind of cheapens the look. Are you easy auto pairing? Is my headset even turned on? Is my headset battery completely dead? <laughs> This is what I get for not charging it last time. Well, I left the, the headset in the studio for several days after a big VR event and worst case scenario has happened. No, God, please, no. Not only is my headset dead, but my battery that attached is also dead. Although the battery wouldn't save me in this situation because of this. So we'll let the battery charge up for a bit and we will play around with some other audio. So first thing I love to do with these dongles and test is if I just plug it straight into my phone, will it just pair right up? New device, do more with blah, blah, blah. Okay, where's my audio going? Because this claims to be playing, but I've got nothing. Where, where are you sending my audio right now? Oh, it comes with stickers. Sneaky stickers hiding in the book. All right, I'm gonna unplug the dongle and go traditional here. Look for it via Bluetooth. The drop-in is pretty straightforward. It's always interesting to me when a company designs something new, when there's already ones out there and there's examples of things you could take from it and they just don't, where would you store this if it wasn't in your Quest? The Anchor ones, the Soundcore, VR, P10, whatever the heck they were called, you dropped it in, it magneted right in the top, perfect. Like with this, I mean, I guess, okay, in theory, you can shove it in the bottom and store it there. But Anchor was the first one that came out with a set of headphones like this. It did that and not a single one since has 
copied the design, that always shocks me. So we are now pairing. Came with 100% battery according to this, I like that. I also liked though, like if you didn't wanna go through trouble with pairing or something, the dongle on the Anchor ones could just be plugged into any phone with USB-C and it just worked instantly. It's not that Bluetooth's hard or anything, it was just kind of handy for me, especially if I was on a trip and I had multiple phones and I wanted to switch quick and just switch the dongle around instead of going through it all. Jeez. <laughs> Look at this. The audio was right there when I started it. And that is loud. I am in a quiet studio. Like if I was on an airplane, it probably wouldn't have seemed that loud. But like I'm rocking this thing at like 20 to 30% and it feels comfortable. 50%? 90%? Wow, wow. Those get incredibly loud for earbuds like this. That is, I have a lot of earbuds and I rock them near the top. That is shocking. That is the first set of earbuds in a while that I feel like I could blow my eardrums out with. Oh my goodness. And that's not even on a very intense song. Whew. Okay, I'll give it to them so far for audio volume. Oh geez, I don't wanna stick those back in there even at 50%. They actually have some decent bass channeling, I will say. Let's get something a little bit more bassy, but even a song without bass, I can hear and feel the bass well. That's probably the reason these are so big. They actually put some good drivers in here. The plastic feels very slippery, which is fine. It feels fine in your hand. And usually plastic with slippery gets less dirty, but the case would make you expect that it's a bit more of a grippy plastic. Razer has definitely brought over their expertise in bass response, volume. I'm liking that about these. I'm not an audiophile, so keep in mind if when it comes to like hi-fi sound and that kind of stuff, I'm not gonna be the best expert to tell you. But as far as just raw audio quality out of the box, I haven't even messed with my phone settings, so the Dolby Atmos sound stuff could be messing with that. But just out of the box, these sound good. Like they sound quite good. Let me grab something with some spoken audio. But I'm listening to music with lyrics and Everything is clear and great. The Fitness Gram Pacer test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test. Spoken dialogue is really clear. Sounds good. I'm looking for like a action scene or something now. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. I'm Batman. Environmental sounds, surround style sounds are fantastic. Boy, I'm feeling good about these, but something like this I need a lot of time for. I gotta take them out, I gotta test the noise cancellation, I gotta test if it's got pass-through modes. I've gotta obviously test it with my Quest, which is dead at the moment, so early impressions are good so far. After many days and many hours, we are back with the Razer Hammerhead Hyper Speed, made for meta freaking earbuds, way too wordy of a name. We got them here against some of the top competitors, the Soundcore VRP10s, the Easy SMX piece of craps, and the Prism XRs, which we reviewed a while back. You know me, let's start with the cons. They're expensive. First of all, 150 bucks. Think about these as you're not really paying for just a set of Quest headphones. You are paying for a set of Razer earbuds that you can use with anything on the go anywhere. So maybe that price tag becomes a little more justifiable, especially when you add in the active noise canceling. Speaking of what's going on in my left ear and distracting me so I cannot continue to talk with that in me. One thing I noticed a lot in just having these around trying to store them, I always was like, why didn't they make a spot as I, point out <laughs> for this dongle. Like I kept shoving it in the bottom of here to kind of store it, but it makes you realize the more you're using these as someone who's coming at it from a Quest perspective, they had these headphones, they already made these. The dongle was kind of an afterthought. The VR support was kind of an afterthought. So they added this in, but it's not the most supportive. It doesn't have a spot to charge through it. It's literally just there to help you attach it to a Quest with super low latency. And with that, it does work. But as far as the actual earbuds go, the audio quality, I will say against any of these, is better. The fit is better, the comfort's better. They are kind of huge, but the way that they made this more of an oval shape instead of a, just a round shape, everybody I tried these on said that they do feel very comfortable for earbuds, even with this huge tip in here. The volume is surprisingly loud, but one thing about the volume that actually became a con for me, your phone, if I haven't used it in a while, I haven't put the Bluetooth on, it defaults back to 50%, which was too loud for these. So what I found myself sometimes doing was lowering all of the EQ settings down to get it a little quieter so it wouldn't blow my ears out. When it comes to a Quest perspective, that should be a pro because, you know, the Quest is kind of quiet, especially the two, the three at least is a little better, but you think, okay, well, at least you're finally going to get all the volume you want. I plugged in the dongle to the Quest and immediately I turned the Quest all the way up and still had this lacking. So what I found myself doing was in the EQ, there's an enhanced mode. You can set the EQ yourself. I was using those ones because I needed that extra volume for the Quest, but then that put me back and forth between now having it too loud for my phone and still not loud enough on the Quest. And speaking of 
that, the app that is for it, it's the Razer Audio app. It's for a lot of things. It's not the most complex of apps, so it's fine. It gets you through. It lets you do some customizing. But another thing that bugged me was in the customizing, it let you decide, okay, what does one tap do? What does two taps do? The one thing I really wanted to change the volume up and down. Typically, I'll do like one tap pauses, two taps is volume up, and then hold skips a track or something. For some reason, the volume settings are only available on the double tap hold. So tap, hold, will go volume up. And you can't change it, you turn it off, but you can't switch it to any of the other functions. Most of the other functions can be switched around. Kind of annoying, just kind of a weird little detail. One thing that initially bugged me was how deliberate the tapping feature had to be. So it's not like a tap to play, tap to play, tap to play. It's like tap and let go, tap and let go. Even as I just did that, it finally turned on the music I was playing. Like that, not doing it. That did it. At first I really hated that, but as I got more used to the earbuds, I did find I kind of liked that a little bit because a lot of times you actually tap other ones or you just swipe your hand past it and music stops, starts. It's very deliberate, but over time I did learn to actually kind of appreciate that about it. So it was something that the taps are, it feels weird but ultimately I liked it. With how much you're paying for these, they aren't like hyper intelligent earbuds. They do some noise canceling. They work like most Bluetooth earbuds, but if you were coming from like AirPod Pros, you would probably feel like, even though these might cost a hundred bucks less or 50 bucks less, you would feel like these are pretty inferior and dumb. I mean, you take them out of your ears, they have no idea whether they're in your ears or not. If you're holding them in your hand and you're accidentally tapping the back, it's gonna keep messing with them and changing settings. So a lot of little things like that kind of bug me. And also the fact they modeled them after AirPods. If you were around when AirPods launched, you know, AirPods were ugly. People still think they're kind of ugly, but Apple, you know, they want people to know it's their product. They want it to look different and they designed it in a way that people knew, oh, that's an Apple product when they saw it. And like the whole industry has pivoted towards this and it's ugly to me, like, especially cause this one's got this big driver at the top. At least on some people's head shapes, AirPods might stay closer to your head and not look so bad. But these ones, if I actually get it in my ear where I want to, it's sticking out like an antenna or like a little tiny Bluetooth. That's a personal preference thing, but I've just always found that look to look kind of bad. I'd prefer ones that are just small enough near your ear. And if you are, using it also as a Bluetooth, it can only be the right one. It's not swappable like it is with the P10s. The mic quality isn't great, although it's the P10s were terrible. So it's about on par with that. Last thing I'd say that's just kind of a con, for how much you're paying, I feel like the case should not just have this like one light here. Like there should be multiple lights telling you how much charge is left in the case because they claim six and a half hours on this. I did get six hours. They claim that boosted up to 30 hours with this, which I never made it through because you're putting them in and out. But it'd be nice to know, okay, does the case need charging soon? Like if they had four lights that showed you that, oh, the case is down, down to about one charge, that'd be great. With how big they are, how far they stick out of here, I found if you're like wearing like a pullover sweater, you can put a sweater on actually pretty easily. It'll go down over them just fine as I completely lose one. With these little things to get here, you are not taking a sweater off your head without ripping your earbuds out along with it. So small detail, but I'm used to using ones that typically stay closer in your ears. And so I found multiple times I dropped them because of that. To the good, they do work really well with the Quest with the dongle if you have plenty of battery charge because you can't charge while these are in. But you plug this in, even if you were playing music on your phone actively to these, the dongle will override it in that case, take over and start playing your Quest. Positional audio on them is actually really good when you're in a game and something whizzes by you, you really notice that. The noise canceling is a feature that the more I played with it, the more I liked it, it's not gonna silence anything. It just kind of takes the edge off the world around you. And I was really test next, I took them outside in the car all over, and I even had them on and just kept the volume on the music all the way down so it was just the noise canceling. And when you go from on to off, it's such a difference how much of the world around you you can hear. There's also an ambient mode that's supposed to make you more aware of what's going on in the world. And I noticed that did kind of work. Like I would notice if a heater in my house kicked on and I had these on ambient, I'd be like, if you really notice things around you. So that helps. But these are not something that it's gonna work well enough that if you wanna have a conversation with someone while these are in with some music also going, I found it was way too hard to hear and understand the person ever. I was always pulling one out. The case is fine. I mean, most of these cases aren't the most advanced or fancy feeling cases. So it compares pretty normally to the other cases on the market. Just the fact that there was no place for the dongle drove me crazy. But one thing that was interesting, they made these so smooth and slippery that I found when you're trying to get them out, a lot of times you're kind of trying to grab them and struggling to find how to grab them. You can try to get your finger under, but when I had both of them in, like I was walking to a grocery store and putting them on really quick, I always found when I was trying to get them out, I had to struggle and fight a little bit more just because they're so slippery and smooth, it made them difficult to get out of the case. It's clear when you use them, these are gamer headphones. They got the RGB on there. There's even modes in the app for footsteps modes. So if you're playing a first person shooting, you're trying to hear where people are and coming from, it helps amp up their footsteps. But I'd say they look okay enough that you could wear them to the gym. You can wear them anywhere. They're not gonna be that distracting. You can always turn the RGB off if you think that's a little much 
watch in public. Uh, last weird benefit of this specific edition, because there are multiple of the razors. You can get them in black, you can get them in white. I will say that I have noticed over time, the more I mess with earbuds like these, I prefer a light colored case because think about where you're taking these. At the gym, if you're on the treadmill, if you're on the stair climber, it probably has a black cup holder that you're dropping your case into. Your car has a black cup holder. Benches in public are probably dark. I feel like you have a much lower chance of losing something like this or leaving it behind. I actually looked everywhere I could for the prisms that I've been using a lot. And I realized that I probably left them somewhere in their case because of that. So I do think having a light color case overall just might help you a little bit, especially if you're someone that loses earbuds, which I usually don't, but I'm worried unless they're buried somewhere in the studio, they could be. I think I might've lost the prism. So these are the most expensive. They have the most features. I prefer the sound quality on them the best. So I will say they are above the sound course, but they also cost twice the price. I would not say they're worth twice the price. So I'd say if you're between these two and you wait, if these are on sale anywhere near the price, I would choose the razors. But right now at 80 or even less for these versus 150 phase, I would probably just go with these. The Prism XRs I did like, I was using those a lot. They would be next after the sound cores. And then these easy SMXs are just kind of cheap crap, terrible. So they're way down there. The last thing I want to cover here is I want to talk about this whole made for meta thing that's going on in the accessories industry. Made for meta is a badge that comes if a company has partnered up with meta and is specifically making products for the quest, which obviously every quest accessory is made for the quest. It's supposed to be like one more layer of quality assurance and compatibility and blah, blah, blah. These programs are kind of annoying me because it's like products that are really designed well for the quest that have really been thought out and made like Bobo VR's products don't have a made for metal label yet. And yet this, which comes with the dongle that you can't charge pass through on a device that has notoriously bad battery life. And now that they made it for meta, they didn't add any place to put the dongle. It just seems like more and more of these made for meta things. It seems like maybe they're not really extra designed. You know, Razer just got in there because they made earbuds for gaming that happened to work with a dongle for the Quest, but they didn't take any extra steps to make them any better with the Quest than they would have been if you just bought the normal Razer ones. So the whole made for meta label, I'm just trying to warn you, I guess, like, if you see that on a product, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be better than other third party products. I would always look for reviews. Don't just jump on one because you see, oh, it's got that label. That must be better. That doesn't necessarily mean it is. A lot there, a lot to cover. Ultimately, right now, at this price, I'm not going to leave a link to these in the description. Uh, even though they are my favorites, I just feel like they're too much money. Maybe I'll leave a link there with that caveat saying that in the future, if they go on sale, because if you find this video a year from now, maybe these are down to 70 bucks and they're totally worth it. But for me right now, I would not have wished I had paid 150 for those. If I got these on sale now, 70, 80 bucks, I'd feel pretty good about that decision because I have them and because Razor, Meta, or whoever the hell sent them to me, send them to me, I don't pay for them. I am going to probably use these for traveling, planes and stuff, maybe the gym. I don't think I'm really going to use it much for the quest to be honest with you i've been using the onboard audio enough i like that and if i'm gonna put some good headphones on it i'm hoping to find some that stay on it that sound good the extra trouble of these just isn't quite worth it for me but what do you think out there did you get a set of these do you already have a set not for the quest but you use them for other stuff and you absolutely love them for that if that's the case maybe they're worth it because Funny thing, they're 150 for this edition, yet they're 200 for the original edition, which doesn't look like it's any better. But thank you once again for coming out here and being with me today, and I will see you in another reality.